13 problems facing the African continent. Africa is the second largest and most populous continent on the planet. It has the youngest population of any continent and is home to a wide range of ethnicities, cultures and languages. Some of its countries have been dealing with severe humanitarian crises, with high hunger rates, civil unrest, natural disasters and public health hazards. Environmental devastation has resulted in displacement and increasing poverty and hunger, as well as violence that has harmed the continent's people's safety and security. Hello viewers, welcome to another informative video on the channel. If you're new here, ensure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so as to be notified on our future uploads. We shall be taking a look on 13 major problems that Africa faces today in this video, starting with Number 1. Corruption The quality of a country's governance institutions is now largely regarded as a critical determinant of its economic performance. Although certain African countries' governance has improved significantly over the previous two decades, most African countries have yet to transform their governance systems into instruments of peaceful cohabitation, wealth creation and economic growth, and social development. Unfortunately, Corruption continues to be one of the continent's most difficult development challenges. The estimated cost of corruption to African economies is tremendous. According to the African Union, corruption cost African economies $148 billion a year since the 1990s, or about a quarter of the continent's entire production. According to some estimates, corrupt African politicians and civil workers diverted more than $30 billion in development funds to overseas bank accounts in a single year. Corruption, however, has a highly negative impact on the poor, with estimates indicating that low-income African households spend as much as 2-3% of their income on bribes. Fast-tracking Africa's battle on corruption is one of the most crucial strategies for ensuring the continent's economic prosperity. Despite the fact that most Afghan governments have established extensive anti-corruption units, these organizations are often ineffective, and some have even been compromised by the appointing authority. Selective allegations and prosecutions heavily affected by ethnicity have derailed the fight against corruption in some African countries, while in others, judicial systems have become highly corrupted and ineffective in the judging of corrupt cases. Number 2. Resistance in Power For various reasons, African countries have been subjected to power struggles, political turmoil and civil wars. In Africa, 2011 began with the Arab Spring, which swept through Northern Africa and into other Arab countries in the Middle East. Widespread protests forced harsh and long-serving leaders like Tunisia's Ben Ali, Egypt's Hosni Mubarak, and Libya's Muammar Gaddafi from office. In many ways, what was happening in Northern Africa mirrored what was happening in Sub-Saharan Africa during the so-called third wave of democratization in the early 1990s. The overthrow of the three tyrants fueled Africa's determination to depose dictatorial and ineffective regimes. Because of the power imbalance among the branches of government, the judiciary is commonly not as independent as it should be and so cannot freely rule against the government, especially when dealing with delicate and sensitive issues like election disputes, corruption and other forms of power abuse. In nations like Cameroon, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Nigeria and Zimbabwe, executive lawlessness has become all too common. The hegemonic influence of the main parties, which are frequently effectively controlled by the president and a small inner circle of followers, enhances executive supremacy. The widespread abuse of presidential powers in Africa has been aided by a general lack of adequate constitutional accountability procedures and a variety of presidential immunities that allow presidents to avoid justice for their crimes. In essence, Executive lawlessness, which is produced by presidents' broad powers and the lack of effective balances on their use, is one of the biggest risks to modern Africa's gradual and stumbling efforts to establish a culture of constitutionalism. Number 3. Hunger 
over 1.3 billion people live in Africa and hundreds of millions of Africans are also living in extreme poverty. 27 out of 28 of the world's poorest countries are in Africa, where the population is rising at a faster rate than anywhere else on the planet and each country has a poverty rate of more than 30%. Population density, gender inequality, war, political instability, economic slowdowns and downturns, class conflict, corruption, natural disasters and disease aggravate poverty in Africa and when combined with drought and famine, the continent's countries face acute food shortages and food crisis on a regular basis. Drought, violence and insecurity have all contributed to serious food shortages. Many countries have suffered for decades with great poverty, so there are few government and community support services for families. Repeated drought cycles, in particular, throw people into a new food crisis before they have a chance to recover from the previous one. Income opportunities are decreasing livelihoods are being lost, purchasing power is shrinking, and essential food and services are becoming increasingly scarce. Even when food is available, either by going to another location or by carrying food into a food insecure area, many individuals cannot afford it because they earn less than $1.90 per day, which is the definition of poverty. Number 4. Unemployment with an average age of 19.7 years, Africa boasts the world's youngest population. A large young population would normally indicate a large and active workforce, which would be beneficial to any region's development prospects. However, the continent's poor employment situation continues to suffocate young people's potential. According to the African Development Bank, one-third of Africa's 420 million young people aged 15 to 35 were unemployed back in 2015. Another third was vulnerably employed and only one out of every six were in paid jobs. Despite having the lowest unemployment rates in the world among young people aged 15 to 24, the majority of African youth work unofficially and many are underemployed or remain in poverty despite working due to low wages and a lack of a societal safety net, making it difficult to compare African countries to more advanced economies. According to the African Development Bank, whereas 10 million to 12 million young people enter the workforce each year in Africa, only 3 million formal employments are produced each year. Because most African countries have little or no societal safety, African youths have little choice but no work. According to the African Development Bank, arts and social sciences graduates are popular in Algiers driving taxis, while Cameroonian engineers transport passengers on commercial motorcycles in Douala. Number 5. Healthcare Without access to medicines, Africans are vulnerable to the continent's three major killer diseases, which are malaria, tuberculosis and HIV and AIDS. With timely access to suitable and cheap medicines, vaccinations and other health services, many diseases can be prevented or treated. However, less than 2% of medications taken in Africa are produced on the continent, which means that many sick individuals lack access to locally produced drugs and may be unable to pay imported drugs. According to the World Health Organization, Africa accounts for half of all children under the age of five who die from pneumonia, diarrhea, measles, HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria. According to the organization, having access to medicine means having medicines that are always available and affordable at health facilities within a one-hour walking distance of the population. Number six, electricity. Since World War II, Global electrification has continuously increased, reaching 73% in 2000 and 90% in 2019. This means that over 770 million people were without electricity in 2019, with three quarters of them living in Africa. Satellite photos taken at night show that the continent's center remains dark. Electrification rates in Chad and the Central African Republic 
are less than 5%, and rates in populous countries like Angola, Ethiopia and Mozambique and Sudan are less than 50%. Even South Africa, by far the best supplied country, south of the Sahara, has blackout on a regular basis. More than 30 African countries are currently experiencing power shortages and frequent service outages, promptly several to rely on very expensive rented generating plants as a last resort. Frequent power outages result in significant losses in lost sales and damaged equipment, on average 6% of turnover for formal businesses and up to 16% of turnover for informal businesses unable to offer their own backup generation. Power outages can cost more than 2% of a country's gross domestic product. It has cut as much as a quarter of a percentage point of yearly year per capita GDP growth rates in some countries. Number 7. Poverty Poverty in Africa is widespread and is defined as a lack of resources to meet a person's basic human needs. Despite a richness of natural resources, African countries often rank towards the bottom of any list assessing small-scale economic activity such as income per capita or GDP per capita. In 2009, Sub-Saharan Africa accounted for 22 of the 24 countries on the United Nations Human Development Index that were classified as having low human development. Furthermore, by any measure, Africa's portion of global revenue has been steadily declining over the last century. In 1820, the average wage for a European worker was roughly three times that of an African worker. The average European now makes 20 times as much as the average African. Africa's economic crisis is self-perpetuating as it generates more disease, warfare, bad governance and corruption, all of which contributed to its origin. Poverty has other negative implications as well. Africa's low level of living and quality of life is the most immediate result of low GDP. Africans have little consumer goods with the exception of a privileged elite and the more fortunate peoples of South Africa and the Maghreb. The standard of living does not always correspond to a country's wealth, such as Angola for example. It earns a lot of money from its diamond mines, but the country is still in bad shape following years of civil war and unrest. Number 8. Transport Personal transportation in Africa, like any place else, is a mix of different modes. Motorcycle taxes, commuter taxes, personal vehicles and non-motorized modes of transportation such as cycling and walking are among the most common. The continent's transportation sector is changing as new means of transportation evolve, including bus rapid transit, light rail and e-ride sharing. Unmanned aerial vehicles are also making inroads into Africa's transportation scene, with a number of international organizations presently testing drones, particularly for medical supplies. The sector, however, is not without flaws, which include broken road networks that limit access to work for a considerable segment of the population, declining air quality in major cities due to increased motorization and inadequate safety measures, particularly on roadways, resulting in a high accident incident rate. Africa, like the rest of the globe, is experiencing a crisis in road safety, with the world's highest per capita incidence of road fatalities and road deaths in Sub-Saharan Africa, which are expected to be more than quadrupled from 243,000 in 2015 to 514,000 by 2030. Number 9. Bad Leadership A government is the mechanism that ensures that law and order are maintained in all aspects of human life. As a result, the absence of good governance is simply objects of mismanagement marked by dictatorial leadership, disregard for the law, institutional failures, and so on. Africa has been plagued by leaders who have lost sight of the goal of forming a government and ensuring good governance. Africa is home to 54 independent nations that are rich in natural and human resources 
as well as investment opportunities. However, despite all of this continent's unique and great qualities, there is a clear challenge of bad governance. Over the course of history, Africa has seen a variety of leadership styles. The period of kingdoms to dictatorships to democrats and self-perpetrating rule in this age can be attributed to the season of darkness in African leadership. In many African countries, the democratic ideology that drove the struggle for self-rule and independence was quickly replaced by a centralizing logic of authoritarianism in the immediate post-independence era, driven by the need to maintain political power. As a result, the new African rulers' political culture was heavily impacted by their belief in elitism, nationalism, and corporatism, which represented both traditional African society and Western imperialism socialization tendencies. In the immediate post-colonial era, African corporate and political elites began to believe that they had a monopoly on legitimacy and wisdom. Number 10. Poor Infrastructure In comparison to other countries of the world, Africa has poor quality and expensive infrastructure services. It is estimated that this affects productivity by up to 40% and reduces GDP by around 2% each year on the continent. With the impending implementation of the African Continental Fee Trade Area, which will be the world's largest single market for products and services, as well as free movement of investments and people, the need for infrastructure development on the continent has never been greater. Furthermore, extreme events linked to climate change are already wreaking havoc on Africa's inadequate current infrastructure. Number 11. Poor Education Poverty's impact on education in Africa continues to be one of the most pressing issues aggravated by major structural issues such as a lack of job possibilities for school and university graduates. Sub-Saharan Africa has the greatest rates of educational deprivation of any area. Over one-fifth of children between the ages of 6 and 11 are out of school, followed by one-third of adolescents aged 12 to 14. According to UIS data, about 60% of young people between the ages of 15 and 17 do not attend school. The situation would certainly worsen unless immediate action is taken, as the region faces escalating demand for schooling due to a still growing school age population. There are about 72 million children in Africa who do not receive an education. They are unable to attend school for various reasons such as working at home. Gender concerns, religion, war and health are among reasons why children are denied an education in Africa. Schools are being destroyed by wars and sick children are being held out of school. Number 12. Terrorism Threats Terrorism is a worldwide phenomenon that poses a serious danger to peace and stability in Africa. Currently, there are numerous Islamist extremist groups operating in Africa. However, Al-Qaeda is associated to the most well-known terrorist groups, including Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, AQIB, and Arsenal Dina. ISIS is linked to the Islamic State of Somalia, and IS has posed an increasing threat to Mozambique. In the Lake Chad region, the Islamic State of West African Province, ISWAP, a breakaway group from Boko Haram, is gaining power and influence. In addition, Anta Din has grown in prominence in Mali, while Islamic State in Greater Sahara ISGS, has expanded its territory in Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso since 2016. Libya's lack of governmental stability and civil war has accelerated the spread of terror in the Sahel. Terrorism is a diverse phenomenon in and of itself, as terrorist groups are divided along ethnic, religious and geographical lines. Furthermore, rivalries between umbrella organizations such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS play out among their different followers on African soil. Number 13. Interference from Colonial Outsiders and Weak Leadership 
When the historical roots are examined, it becomes evident that much of Africa's current terrible situations of poverty, corruption and violent wars are the result of foreign involvement into African affairs, and not just an issue of African decisions. Many of today's African problems originate from colonial, political and economic practices, Cold War alliances and external attempts to influence African political and economic institutions throughout the decolonization and post-independence periods. Local causes caused dozens of new recent conflicts, but external political and military actions changed the dynamics and made them more deadly. Africa is clearly far from being politically, culturally and economically independent of the Western model of influence. Africa's modern governance failure is linked to its acceptance of Western models that are either not implemented or executed badly. While weak governance is the foundation of an African state, efforts to promote good governance have been largely unsuccessful. There you have it viewers, hope the video was informative enough and thanks for sticking around to the end. Ensure to subscribe if it's your first time on the channel and turn on notifications so to get notified on our future uploads.